Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what is currently taking place across the tropics and is there still a chance for us to maybe see something try to develop before we end uh, this month, before this month comes to a close. And so before I go into details, All right, but first things first, let us journey over into the Eastern Pacific and see what is going on out there. And so currently there is a disturbance and it has a high chance to develop into something. And right now we have all the shower and thunderstorm activity that is taking place off uh, Central America right there. And so that is going to be drifting a little bit towards the West. And so uh, we could definitely see something develop over there. Fortunately, not expected to be a threat to land. And so as of right now, over in the Atlantic Basin, we are seeing uh, that we don't have anything really major. We do have some shower activity taking place in portions of the Northwestern Caribbean. And out there, we have all of that very deep convection about to emerge off Africa. And uh, we could see tropical wave within that region. And that is what uh, models such as the Euro Ensemble tracks were expecting possibly develop into something. But that chance seems to be diminishing for the system because of all of the dry air and so as I speak about that let's go ahead and take a look at that dry air map and so here we have it and as we see more of the oranges and reds and that pink shade that is when we have more of an abundance of dry air out there and so this is likely to inhibit development because things are just going to be so dry and hostile out there there's going to be a big lack of moisture and so it is likely that any tropical waves that are going to be emerging off Africa are going to be struggling to uh, have showers and thunderstorms associated with them as a result of all of this dry air. And so things could get a little bit more conducive if the waves would survive uh, all that and make their way towards more favorable conditions and the GFS model run is showing something pretty interesting now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and here we have it. This is by Wednesday, the 3rd of August. And so the GFS uh, run is showing that we would have that wave making its way across the Atlantic, crossing over the Greater Antilles and into the Gulf where there would likely be more favorable conditions. And so there we have that 1007 millibar low pressure system. So the model is showing development almost immediately after the system would emerge into the Gulf of Mexico. And then eventually the model has this thing here intensifying a bit with the pressure of 991 millibars at that time by August 4th uh, and making landfall in portions of the Gulf Coast of Texas. And so this is just a prediction. This does not uh, has to be the outcome with the tropical wave, but let us wait and see what's going to be happening. However, the month of August has to be watched for development. But as I said earlier, uh, chances are decreasing for this due to all the dry air that's out there so this is what the euro ensemble tracks are showing now so they're agreeing with that low pressure system associated with the tropical wave but uh, we start to see some of these drop off actually quite a bit of them and then eventually the model isn't showing that anything of great significance is going to be out there, contrary to what was expected at first. So now there is decreased confidence in something developing out there. And that is all due, as I said, to the dry air that is in abundance. And uh, this thing here, if we would have more of that convection being uh, more south of this dry air, maybe it would have a better chance. But the uh, Bermuda High is what really influences the tracks of tropical systems and so it, so it is expected to be a little bit weaker and when we have it weaker we typically have storms moving a bit more north and might curve out into the Atlantic however when we have a stronger uh, high pressure system out there we typically have storms uh, just continuing westward and so we've seen that with quite a bit of storms and so guys uh, we definitely have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be but as I said confidence is decreasing for us to see some development as they're going to be heading into the late part of this month and heading into next month. And so compared to last hurricane season in 2021, we are currently two names behind because we haven't had our D-name storm. And last year we were at Elsa. 
episode of Fred didn't develop until the 11th of August. And we're seeing a similar situation now in this July. We don't have anything really is developing. Things are just so quiet and it is all due to those unfavorable conditions, mainly the dry air that is in abundance. But as we're going to be heading more to August and more to the peak of the hurricane season, we're expecting a more favorable environment to be there to enable tropical cyclone formation. But we are definitely behind last hurricane season. But that doesn't mean that the season isn't going to be active uh, because we typically see most activity as we head to August, September, uh, maybe October and November as well. And so even though we are two names behind last hurricane season, Last year, there was a very quiet November and only one system developed in October. This year, it could be uh, contrasting that. We could have storms develop in October and November, and we still probably have maybe around the same amount of name storms as last year. But I certainly think that this season is going to be pretty active. It's just typical right now that things are quiet but as I said as we're going to be heading more to the peak of the hurricane season things are going to be getting more and more active out there. Also during the month of August we typically have our tropical cyclones uh, emerging as tropical waves off Africa first and then they might make their way to the Caribbean or to the US and so we definitely have to be on the lookout for that. Uh, so or Cape Verde type systems are definitely going to be coming as they're going to be heading into late August going to September. So uh, let's wait and see what's going to be eventually happening. But this season is expected to be pretty active. We have that La Nina that is expected. And uh, a stronger La Nina means a more active season. And the La Nina phase of the ENSO or the El Nino Southern Oscillation brings with it more favorable conditions over in the Atlantic Basin and less favorable conditions in the Pacific. So in the Pacific, there is less thunderstorm activity and that is going to re uh, result in reduced shear across the Atlantic Basin. So uh, with conducive wind shear or weak wind shear, then we would definitely have uh, tropical systems having a greater chance to develop. And so that is what is expected as you're going to be heading into the rest of this hurricane season. And so guys, uh, of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated on what is going on out there. But as of right now, things are quiet. And as I said, confidence is decreasing for us to see that system, that wave uh, emerging off Africa and possibly developing. But as time progresses and as we head further into this hurricane season, we can definitely be on the lookout for a lot more systems developing from the main development region and making their way towards the west, either to the Caribbean or to the US. And so uh, I will be keeping you guys updated as time goes by. And if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best as soon as I can and of course remember to always be weather wise.